it's a competition clinching shot. Whoa! How about that? The LET Golf Podcast, the official podcast of the Ladies European Tour. Yes, welcome back to the LET Golf Podcast with myself, George Cooper, Nicola Kenton, and special guest this week, it's Austria's Christine Wolf. Christine, how are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem at all. And fresh from being a winning captain at ATS Singapore, how does that sound? Oh, it sounds amazing. Yeah, how was the week in general? Oh, we had so much fun. Such a, a nice team. Um, I think we already knew that going into it, that it's going to be a good team uh, no matter what. Like, we'll, we're all just there to have a good time, play well, and... Yeah, we just cheered each other on really well. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, this, the team dynamics seem great. I know you're, you're good friends with Ellie and obviously Cass Alexander as well, who seems to be a machine in the ATS uh, events. Uh, but was that something that really helped you out there? I mean, just having a nice, relaxed atmosphere? Yeah, for sure. I think it's always easier when everyone's a bit relaxed. And yeah, I just figured, you know, I didn't beat um, Cass in, in Saudi last year. So might as well have her on my team. And then that Ellie was the random was just um, perfect because we get along really well. And I know she can make a lot of birdies too. So yeah, it was just a really good team effort. Nice one. And how was Singapore? It looked incredible out there. Oh, it was, it was really good. First time I've been there. Um, I stayed an extra day to do a little bit of sightseeing. Um, yeah, it was just really nice. Very impressive uh, city. And yeah, lots of things to do actually. I didn't really know before going there. So then I asked some friends that have been before. So um, they gave me some tips and yeah, walked around a bit and actually walked around all day, probably slept really well on the plane home. Um, yeah, no, it was a really good experience out there. Nice. What was the coolest thing you saw? I really enjoyed being, we went to the top of the Marina Bay Sands Hotel and you've got a really cool view up there. And um, the gardens... They were really nice. We went for a light show there one of the evenings. So, yeah, very impressive. Nice. And did, and did you get to have any celebrations, you three, or what did you do to celebrate the win? Uh, we didn't really because Ellie and Kes left that evening, but hopefully we'll get on to that the next time we see each other. <laughs> and Christine, as we do on this podcast, we'll take you back to the beginning of your golf journey. Obviously, um, Austria is not necessarily, as you mentioned, snowing snowing right now not necessarily a country you think of when it comes to golf but how did you get into golf both my parents played they started when they were in university because the golf club was looking for new members um so it was natural that my sister and I started playing golf as well and we were really lucky when we started because there was a lot of juniors that were our age and we all started together so it was always a lot of fun when we went to the golf course and are your early memories kind of, yeah, the social aspect of being with your friends, being with your sister, getting to know people whilst also learning a new sport at the same time? Yes, for sure. Because, I mean, especially at the start when you're a kid, you're just there really to have fun. So it was nice because we had some padding matches, chipping matches. And then also I remember the first couple of years we were actually caddying for our parents and... Got a little bit of pocket money for doing that. <laughs> but it was quite nice because then it was an easy way to sort of learn your way around the golf course and how to behave. So, yeah, it was good. I was going to say, did that help in kind of when you came to actually playing yourself around a golf course, the fact that you had kind of padded for your parents <laughs> and, and seeing how it goes, did that help you? Yeah, I would think so. Like then you just realise how, like what you do, where you have to stand, um, that you have to be quiet at times. Yeah. All of that stuff. And as you mentioned, there were a lot of juniors at the time. Um, what was that like being a junior, learning to play golf? And then when was your first competition? I think my first competition was when I was, well, the first bigger one when I was 12. And that was like the under 12 Austrian championships. And yeah, I, I didn't really know what was going on. I think it was the first stroke play I ever played because before that we just played stable for it. And yeah. I don't think I broke a hundred the first two rounds, but then maybe the third. Yeah. But yeah, it's just good memories thinking back. And a lot of the, the girls and guys from then are still good friends and they still follow my golfing career. And 
it's really nice to catch up with them when I'm home. So yeah, it's always been good. And at the time when I was um, getting to the Austrian national team, there was quite a few of the girls from my club in the national team too. So it was nice because then mm -hmm. it was familiar faces and you had a lot of people to practice with, with around your hometown as well. And when was the point where you started to take golf kind of more seriously and be like, oh, I, I'm okay at this. Like, I'm pretty good. <laughs> um, probably when I was 14, 15. Um, I was still ski racing at the time as well. So then it was sort of, okay, what do I do? And I always, I always preferred golf, I think. And then decided to stick with golf. And then I got into the national team. I think I was just between 14 and 15. And yeah, and from there, there on, it just got, like, I got better. I played more international tournaments as well. And yeah, just got one step at a time. Yeah. And you mentioned there that obviously you were skiing at the same time, racing. Um, so growing up, what sporting heroes did you have? Were they from lots of sports? Did you have like a variety? <laughs> well, of course, there was Tiger uh, in the golf part. But then there was definitely a lot of skiers in there at the time. Um, my parents used to have a ski rental shop at the mountain that's really close to where I grew up. And quite often, because the former um, president of the Austrian Ski Federation, he's from my town as well. So quite a few skiers actually came here and practiced and stuff. So it was normal for me to see some of them. So I, they, I probably have more sporting heroes in the skiing world than in the golfing world growing up. But it definitely changed later on in my career. <laughs> and what did you kind of... What skills did you take from the skiing that you could use to golf? Because everyone always says that sports are transferable in one way or another. Was there anything that you could take across? Um, probably, I would say probably the use of my legs. I think they're quite strong. Um, that's probably come from skiing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where I get a lot of power from in the golf swing. Yeah. So that's probably it. <laughs> As you said, you maybe preferred golf always compared to skiing what, what was the goal always to become a professional athlete of some sort or what was your goal when you were younger <laughs> um no I don't think I thought of being a professional athlete growing up uh, as a kid I did a lot of sports I did tennis um, rock climbing mountain biking just whatever comes in your mind and so it was just really we were a lot of outdoors um, sports people and yeah and then I just stuck to golf I think I just stuck with golf because I was best at golf out of all the sports that mm -hmm. I tried and I guess it worked out in the end yeah <laughs> and you mentioned going on the obviously Austrian national team and like being around that setup and obviously having lots of friends in that setup as well um, what was it like to represent Austria obviously in the European ladies team championships and all those competitions that you do when you're an amateur well, growing up, you always feel like it's an honor. You get to represent your country. You get to wear your your colors. Um, yeah, and I remember the first European Girls Championships. I was really nervous because it was the first time playing for Austria, and all of a sudden you see all the other teams there. But it's really cool. It's a very nice atmosphere, and uh, you know that the federation is there to support you, be behind you, and just help you along the way. Um, yeah, it was really a good team effort. Um, yeah, and the girls, you're just four girls. So we were pretty much the same age. And then we all went to the women's European um, amateur championships and stuff. So pretty much from 14 until 23, 22, 23, when I turned pro, you have the same girls around you that are sort of your age. And you kind of grow up together, even though we were from different parts of Austria, you would see each other every week at a tournament or a practice camp. So it was nice. A lot of friends all over Austria. Good stuff. And I mean, like so many of our players on the LET, you ended up going down the college route, didn't you? Went to University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Um, talk to us about that, like going from Austria to there. First of all, why did you pick there? And, and secondly, like how, how difficult was that decision? Um, well, I always said after I graduated from high school, I would want to go to the US to play golf there. And 
then I actually played a tournament in Scotland, the Duke of York. And um, my coach was there. My college coach was there. And she gave me her card and everything and told me, yeah, please just get in contact with me. I've tried to get in contact with you through, through the Federation, but they never forwarded me their details or anything. So then I finally got her card. And then I emailed her, I think, a month or two later. And it was just, I think, a week before the early signing period or something. So she sent the contracts over and was like, if you're ready to commit, like we'll do the the recruitment trip that you can go look at a school and stuff after, but just sign it so you so I know you're coming and everything. And I was like, okay. So I just I went, signed it, and then went over to the States, I think in January or so, to look at the school. And I really liked it from the start. It's not that big of a school. And the first year I went to college there was actually the first year of the women's golf team. So it was quite nice actually to be part of something new. And we were actually quite a good team from the very start. Ah, really cool. And like, so what was it like playing college golf? How much fun was that? It was really good. Actually, then when I was over there, I saw a lot of other European girls that I've played with growing up um so it was nice whenever you go to a tournament and then you see familiar faces and it it was very different for me like all of a sudden it was very like structured working out in the morning then going for classes and then golf practice um it was it definitely took some time getting used to it at the start and I was falling into bed at early early hours um in the evenings because I was too tired but no, it was definitely a great experience and I would do it again in a heartbeat. Good stuff. And what's like your favorite memory from playing out there, would you say? Um, probably, well, there's probably two, I'd say. The one where we made it to nationals, which is the biggest college golf tournament. And the other one where I won a tournament my senior year. Perfect. And how would you say it helped you then? It propelled you into life on the LET? Um, well, I feel like I learned how to practice better and to have some goals also in practice, like what to work on, what to, what's, what to focus on so you can score better. Um, it's still, when you're in college, they plan everything for you. They plan your trip, they book your hotel and stuff, and you just go on the team bus and then go to the tournament. That's definitely a different aspect when you're on tour and you do everything yourself. Um, but it's still, I feel like just the atmosphere because the best players in the world that don't turn pro right away go to college in the States. And so it's still a really good competition and you sort of see where you're standing. So I think it was a really good preparation for me. And then obviously after you finish college, you turn pro. <laughs> so what, was that always the plan to kind of finish up at school and then make the leap to professional golf? Yeah, I think my parents, they always said, you have to finish school first. You're not allowed to turn pro before you finish school, um, which was fine. And actually, my senior year, I qualified for the US Open. Um, nice, nice. I was still an amateur. And then I played the US Open. It was my very first professional tournament ever. Um, not a bad one to start with. <laughs> um, and then it was even before the tournament started. And I said to my parents, yeah, that's what I want to do. I, I love it here. I feel comfortable and yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and so making your professional debut at the at the USF, and not many people can say that, um, but what was that like for you? I was so nervous the first day, first tee. I remember there was just so many people standing down tee left and right. And all I was thinking is, please just don't hit anyone. Um, drive went out straight. But it's still, all of a sudden you're standing there and you see all those people there and you're like, oh my God, what's going on? <laughs> no, but it's a, it's an amazing feeling. And then I, I remember, I think that's probably the best memory of my US Open because I didn't play great. But I made a, it was probably 20, 25 meter putt, so like 70 mm -hmm. feet. Um, and I made that putt on the 18th hole and the roar was incredible i had goosebumps it was it was amazing and so obviously once you've done that and then you kind of make your way back to europe and deciding where you're going to play um you obviously started out on the let 
access series as well. Um, how much does that tour kind of help up and coming golfers who've just turned pro and obviously want to get a taste of professional life and playing in tournaments across Europe? I think it's a really nice way to get started, to get your feel for it. Um, it was actually because in 2012, I came back from the States and then I hadn't played Q school before. So I didn't have a category. And then I um, emailed the tour and asked if I could get some invites. And then I got two invites to play in the source and in Crete. And yeah, it was just really nice. And then, like I said before, all of a sudden you see all your familiar faces again, the ones that you've played with growing up. And so it's quite nice because you can catch up with them and they sort of give you some tips travel-wise. Um, so it was definitely an, an easier route for me, I think, to go to Excess and then I made my way to LET because there's just so many familiar faces on Excess and then you get to LET and then there's some older ones as well that you've heard of but you haven't played with really. Yeah, and you mentioned Crete there. What was that tournament? What was that tournament like? Um, getting that win. <laughs> yeah, it was a crazy tournament, really. Uh, I was really sick actually, and we couldn't play the first two days because the weather was horrible. And I was so happy because I had a fever and everything the first two days. Um, the third day when we actually played the tournament, I felt a little better, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah I just want to play, want to try." It. And then I shot. I think five under um and then I was in the playoff and yeah and then I made this long putt I think it was probably like 11 12 meters long and I made it and Chrissy hit it to like a meter and her slipped out so then I won the playoff um so I won the Exus tournament in my second start on the Exus which was really cool and how much confidence did that give you? Obviously, finishing college, you won in your senior year, making your pro debut, and then suddenly you've won a tournament. <laughs> how much does that fill you going, OK, I've definitely made the right decision, I'm on the right track? Yeah, it definitely supports the decision you've made. Um, I wasn't expecting to win that early, but definitely um, took it with me and just tried building on that. Um, Knowing, yeah, it was just a one-day tournament in the end, but still, um, knowing that you've won, so you just want to try and do it again. Yeah, for sure. And another cool experience that you've had so far in your career is the Olympic Games. Um, what what was it like to represent Austria and you know wear that uniform at the Olympic Games, which, from a skiing background, is obviously something that is so important to you. Yeah. The Olympic Olympic Games in Austria are quite big because of the Winter Olympics mainly, but summer sports are getting better and better, so it's good to see. Yeah, and then when in 2016 golf was um, an Olympic sport again, it was an amazing experience to be part of it. Um, just being in the village, seeing all the other athletes, watching what they are doing, walking around, talking to them, uh, and then wearing your um, country's colors uh, it makes you very proud um, yeah and it's just the golf course was really nice too and I think all the golfers that were there well everyone that I talked to really enjoyed it mm -hmm. um, I think they could do better on the format um, I think it would be quite interesting to do some maybe match play format or and also a mixed team or something yeah. But it's already really good to have golf back in the Olympics and hopefully grow. Yeah, I was going to say, um, obviously you mentioned there seeing other athletes. Was there anyone that you met there that week in either of the weeks and you were like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm seeing this person? It was quite funny. I was playing because we, where we stayed in the Olympic Village, there was tennis courts right out of sight, outside our building. So I played tennis with my caddy and then Djokovic walked past and he saw we were wearing the Austrian colors. So he said in German, he was like, it looks really good. It looks good. Keep on going. <laughs> it was quite funny. So then I was like, Oop, all right. <laughs> um, and then Michael Phelps was there, went to see him and use him bold in the athletics. So, yeah, there was quite a few big names there, which was very impressive to see. 
And do you have any other cool stories from your Olympic experiences? Anything else that you, you'll remember for the rest of your life? Well, when I went to the gym, I didn't feel as much of an athlete as all the other ones that were in there. <laughs> that was definitely something um, when you go in there and I did my running and just a little bit of weights. And then all of a sudden you see those guys next to you that are lifting so much more than you are. And I was just like going more and more into a corner. I was like, I'll just stay over here out of your way. No, but no, it's just amazing. Like, you know, everyone is there for the Olympic Games. Everyone is just there to do really good in their sports. And it's a very different feel than any other tournament we play in. Also, probably because there's so many other athletes there. All right, well, in between those Olympic ex experiences, you obviously got your first win on the LET out in India. First of all, talk to us about that week. I mean, coming back from obviously the, the heartbreak a year prior um, on the final hole, you know, how how did you sort of rebound from that and what was it like to, to win in India? Yeah, yeah, 2018 was definitely a tough year in India. Um, but then going back, it was really funny all season in 2019, whenever I had a similar shot as the one on 18 over the water, I was just standing over and I was like, yeah, it's good practice. It's good practice for, for that one. And yeah, and then going back in 2019, I just, I actually felt really relaxed and I was just happy to be back. And I felt like, okay, finally I'm back, back in India. I can prove myself. I can um, get to peace with the 18th hole. And yeah, and I actually, I started out a bit slow on the first day, but then started playing really well and played the 18th hole much better and it was just a relief actually to then have my first win at the tournament where I struggled so much the year before. Good stuff and how did that win sort of change your life? I think it took a while for me to sink in that I that I then actually did it. Um, yeah sponsors were really happy they they all congratulated me right away. Um, obviously, my family was very excited too. And yeah, it's a different feel when, when you've won on tour and then you go back out and you're like, okay, I've won. But then it's like, you don't want to leave it at that one win. You want to go out again and, and do it again at some point. Yeah, for sure. So would you say the mindset's changed now, the way you approach every tournament? I think so, yeah. Because you know you've done it before and... You've pulled through, so you feel like, okay, if I'm in that situation again, there's a chance that I could, that I can pull through again. Yeah. Is that something that adds more or less pressure, would you say? I'd say less pressure because okay. you've been in a situation before, you you know what to do. Yeah, it's not always going to work out, but you've. The, I feel like the more often you get into that situation, the more comfortable you'll feel. Yeah, definitely. And I think... I heard you say before that you didn't really have time to celebrate that win, but uh, what was it like when you came back home to Austria? Uh, well, I actually landed in my little airport and then there was the TV crew was waiting um, okay. at the local news um, station and I was not expecting that. <laughs> but no, it was really nice to see that so many people were excited for me and the amount of feedback I got even in my little town, where which is pretty much a skiing town, not a, a golfing town. Um, it was really nice also from people that didn't play golf to see that they followed and that they were really happy for me. And then moving to last year, because last year you did something a little unusual, <laughs> which not, not everyone does, but you decided to take a break from golf and go on a little trip <laughs> to South America. Um, first of all, what was the kind of, when did you decide that, you were going to take a break, go away and do something that you've always wanted to do? We always wanted to do it. We always wanted to go on a trip through South America because uh, neither of us had been there before. So we actually wanted to do it end of 2020 um, after mm -hmm. I should have defended my title and uh, played the Olympic Games, but then COVID came. Um, so we had to move everything a bit. And and then we said, okay, you know what? It's it's the time now. Um, we'll do it. And so I, we looked at my schedule when I felt like I wanted to be back because 
I really wanted to defend my title, which only happened last year. And so mm -hmm. I wanted to have enough tournaments to get back into things before India. And yeah, enough tournaments to still have a chance to keep my card. So we planned around that. And yeah, we, we always said, okay, if we don't like it, I can always come back earlier. Um, but we did like it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so then I played Kenya and I was supposed to play two more, but then they moved the tournaments in South Africa to a later date. And we had already booked our flights middle of March. So yeah, then we left for South America. <laughs> Um, what what route did you take? Where exactly did you go? Obviously, if if listeners go to your Instagram, you'll see some lovely photos. <laughs> but where exactly did you go on your travels? So we started in Argentina. We flew into Buenos Aires, and then from there we went to Chile, all the way down south to Patagonia. Um, we stayed there for three weeks, mm -hmm. and did quite a few hikes and some mountain biking and yeah just walked around a lot of lakes and stuff like that and then from there we went to Ecuador um, to the Galapagos Islands um, where my husband's siblings came to visit us um, so we did that together and then we went to Costa Rica with them and then for us, they went home again after that, and we kept on going to Panama and Colombia, and then from there on to Bolivia, uh, Peru. So in Bolivia, we did Lake Titicaca, mm -hmm. um, and we actually rode the rode some downhill bikes onto the Death Road. It's called, yeah, because yeah. so many people fell down it. Um, that was a bit crazy because the bikes were not the best. Not sure we would do it again, but it was an experience. Um, yeah, and then from there we took a train to Peru to Cusco, um, and that's where we ended up doing Machu Picchu, mm -hmm. the hike around there, um, which was amazing. The weather was really good, and it was actually not too busy. Like it was still busy, but not as busy as it could be, yeah. um, because they still had quite a few COVID rules. Um, in place so it was quite nice and then from there we went back to Central America mm -hmm. went to Guatemala and Nicaragua um, did some surfing in Nicaragua and some sightseeing and then went back home <laughs> a lot of countries a lot of activities what would you say were some of your best stories from when you were traveling what, what were the things that you remembered most Probably one of the first hikes we did in Patagonia. Um, we had our own tent with us and everything. And we didn't sleep many nights, the first few nights, because there was always something else going on. One night there was a mouse in our backpack that was trying to eat our food. The other time there was so much wind and, wind and rain that we could hardly sleep because we were worried it's just going to take our tent off or something. Um, no, but it was definitely an experience and wouldn't want to miss it. And then the other thing we really enjoyed was the Galapagos Islands. It feels like you're in a zoo without the cages. There's just so many turtles and sea lions and iguanas. It's like huge lizards everywhere. And and then we went snorkeling there. So we saw a lot of wildlife and it was just amazing. And then... Machu Picchu, of course, was one of the highlights. Uh, we always wanted to do that, so we got that off our bucket, bucket list. So it was nice. And I would say, well, probably for both of us, the surprise of the trip was probably Colombia. We really enjoyed it there. It was very colorful, and the people were so nice wherever you went. They were very welcoming, and whenever we needed something, they were there to help us. So it was great. And then obviously coming back, you played at the Scottish, um, which was kind of your first tournament back. What what was that like? Like hitting reality suddenly, or oh, back in the normal world? Yeah, it was it was crazy. I came back and then I had like I think a week and a half at home to practice, and then I went to the Scottish and it was like I have no idea where my game's at, uh, what's going to happen, and then I actually shot two under the first round, so I was very surprised. 
but then the next day it didn't do so well anymore. So you could tell at the start it was uh, not very consistent yet, but it was nice because all of a sudden I made so many more putts than before. And I feel like it's still there. I'm still even now putting better than before I, I left for the trip. So maybe it just freed something up in my head. I don't know. I'll take it. Um, yeah. So the first couple of weeks were a bit tough because I both tournaments in Scotland and Ireland, I played really well the first round and then really bad the second round. And I think in both tournaments, I missed a cut by one or two shots. But it was it was good to see as well that my game is not that far off, mm-hmm. like that I'm still close enough. And then... I actually had the week of the British I had off, uh, but I stayed in the UK. I went to London to practice there. And and then from the week on after, I think I played seven tournaments in a row. And I made, uh, I think, six cuts, five or six cuts. And then the last one, I made a top five. So it was actually, I could tell, okay, it's getting better and it's improving. And I'm I'm starting to play up there again. Uh, which was nice and I was still really relaxed even when I was in contention so yeah it was it was great and I didn't even I didn't really feel pressure about my card or anything because I Mm -hmm. kept thinking okay I still have a lot of tournaments left um you never know um probably the last tournament of the year that's probably where I felt more pressure because it was getting kind of close yeah and I knew I needed some more points. I was inside the top 60, but I knew I needed more points. And then didn't play so well the second and third day, but then had a really good round the last day and ended up being top 60 in the end. I say, how much of an achievement was it for you to be able to get that top 60? I mean, it, it was an Austrian lockout right in the book to there, you and Sarah, but um, how much did that mean to you that you were able to travel do what you wanted earlier in the year and also still maintain your card for the year. Yeah, for me it was huge. Um, I I went into the season really with no expectations because I didn't really know what was going to happen. I knew it was a gamble. I knew it was a risk, um, but I was willing to take the risk. Um, and then yeah, I was so excited that it actually worked out in the end. Um, yeah, no, it was good, and I actually got a lot of really nice feedback from all the other players. Mm-hmm. Um, who were saying, yeah, they're really happy for me that I pulled through and uh, it's it's amazing. And they would want to do something similar, but they, they're they not there yet that they feel like they can do it. Um, but it was nice for them to see sort of that it's still possible. And no, it was just, it was a crazy year. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, and then I came back um, after Spain and I was just exhausted I think because then in the end you could tell okay it was taking a bit of a toll on me that I had like a lot of tournaments in a row because I couldn't take any more weeks off of course yeah. and so so then when I finally came back I did I slept a lot <laughs> and you mentioned earlier that maybe it freed something up in your mind to do with putting but did, it, did it also change your perspective kind of overall with how you approach golf yeah I think so I think I'm more relaxed now um I feel like yes I love golf and golf is everything but it's not really everything like there's still sort of a life outside of golf which is um it's good when you can find a balance sort of in between but yeah I feel like I'm probably more competitive now than I was before I was on the trip um I feel like I'm even I'm getting more consistent um and it's a nice feel like when you tee it up and you're like, okay, if it's my week, it could be the top again. So no, I'm really happy where I am now. You mentioned last year in terms of just a lot happening. And obviously at the end of the year, you said you're really tired, got home from Spain, but also Christine, you managed to get married. <laughs> uh, was that always, always the plan to do that at the end of the season? Um, well, we got engaged on our trip and then, we came home and we were like, okay, when, when should we do it? And so then we thought, you know what? It's been such an amazing year. We feel like we should have, we should um, get married in that year as well. 
<laughs> so we actually did that the week after Spain. I came back from Spain on Monday and we got married on Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the it was just a civil wedding, like the courthouse wedding. Yeah. And it was my family and Robert's family and and then they actually surprised us they invited a lot of our friends and close family to come waiting outside the um courthouse and so we got to celebrate a bit with them as well which was really nice for us and then from there on I actually got to relax <laughs> <laughs> yeah a nice ending to the year yes <laughs> you must have been uh, grateful for this second break then as well <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah, actually, that first break, it went by like this. I feel like it would have been nice probably to have it a little bit longer than what we had. Uh, but it's been nice now to have this sort of second break and uh, reboost and get ready in three weeks' time. Yeah, that's it. And so how would you assess the season so far? I know you, you got the, the team win in Singapore, but how would you assess the season so far and, and what, what are your goals for the rest of the year? Well, the, the team win was definitely a bonus. It was really nice. Uh, I was lucky to have one of the early picks, so um, I think I got a bit lucky there. And my season myself, it's been okay. I had I made all the cuts in all the tournaments, but I haven't had a top finish yet. Um, my game was not consistent enough yet. I made uh, quite a few doubles, which is a bit unusual, but also a lot of birdies, which is nice. So now just working on consistency and then, yeah, hoping to have a few more top five, top 10 finishes and maybe one more on top. <laughs> that would be nice. And just going back to Singapore quickly before we move on to my, my dreaded quiz that I've got for you, Christine. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, How does it work for, for those that might not be familiar? Like, How does it work being the captain? I know you said like you, you picked your team at the beginning, but just how does the whole week work in terms of being a captain yeah it's quite funny because I've been a captain and I've been a pick before so I know both sides um as a captain I feel like you as a player feel like you have more responsibility you have more pressure because you're the captain you're the leader so you want to perform as well um so it's quite nice when you actually start with a birdie or, or so and show the team okay I can play too um but it's really nice. It's like, yeah, you are the leader. You're trying to to get them to play their best golf as well. Um, you're talking a lot to the amateur as well. But the group we had, everyone was talking to everyone, which was really nice. Because sometimes you can have it that you feel like it's only the captain talking a lot um, and trying to push everyone. But we had such a good atmosphere that whenever someone wasn't doing so well on a whole someone else um, picked up the slack for them sort of thing. And yeah, so it was, it's different being a captain than being a pick because as a pick, you sort of just focus on your game. But as a captain, you focus on it, on everyone. But it's nice when you're, when you're the leader and you can perform as well. Right, on to the quiz, Christine. I've got some questions for you to sort of test your let knowledge so we'll see how you get on so far right <laughs> i've got six questions here so let's see how you do so question one uh what was your lowest ever score on the let oh 64 yeah and which tournament which round scandinavian mixed the first round yeah smashed it how's that tournament in general playing in the in the mix it's always i'm, I'm gonna be going this year for my first time and it seems like a really cool cool event to be at it's a really cool event unfortunately I missed it last year but the year before it was amazing um it was really nice I played with two guys the first two rounds which is different for us but it's really nice um also at home when I'm practicing I'm practicing more with guys than with girls so I feel like it's a very relaxed atmosphere and I think everyone really just enjoys that week playing together yeah I can imagine now I'm excited for it right second question um who was the first Austrian to win on the L.E.T.? Nicole Gergely. Yes. And which tournament, which year? It was in France, I think in Paris. Maybe 2009. Yeah, smashing it. Two from two and with the bonus points. <laughs> right, I think that the next one should be easier for you as well, but we'll, we'll go ahead a bit. So you played in the Summer Olympics in 2020 or 2021, but 
Um, and Austria had one gold medal at the Olympics. Can you name who and which event? That was... Christine, I thought you'd... this would be instant. No, no, wait. Was it athletics? Something with athletics? No. I know we only had one. Yeah, you had, uh, I think it was seven medals in total. Oh, wait. Uh, karate. Uh, no, you had a silver and a bronze in judo. There was one gold, it was, I'll give you a clue, it was, uh, okay, it was on a bike. Oh, yeah, um, the, well, what is it called? It was one of the first events of the Olympics too. Yeah, it's always the first, isn't it? The road race. Yes, that's it. Uh, yeah, Anna, Anna Kaisenhofer. Uh, next question then, uh, so you obviously won the Crete Ladies Open on the LET Access Tour. Who did you defeat in a playoff to grab the title? Christian de Vries. Yes, perfect. Right, two to go. This is good showing so far. Um, when you won in India in 2019, what was your winning margin? How many shots did you win by? I think three. Yes, perfect again. And final question. This will be an easy one again. I should have, shouldn't have put this. I should have put the Olympic question last. And that was the only <laughs> one I didn't get yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you've had one hole in one on the LET. Can you tell us the hole, the course, and the event, please? That was on 15 in Switzerland, and yeah, two years ago. Yeah, 2021. Perfect. Uh, very good. So that was five out of six, and with a bonus point. I think that might be the best, the best showing on on my on my quizzes I've been doing. So I feel like I I didn't so. get the most important one, so I should take some points off for that. <laughs> Yeah, the ones that matter. So with the LET, no, perfect. Now, really good fun, Christine. It's been it's been great having you on. Uh, sadly, that is all time all we got time for. Um, but yeah, thanks, thanks for coming on the pod. It's it's been great. Thanks for having me. No, it's been it's been really good what you guys are doing. I've been listening to all of them. I enjoyed it. I hope everyone's gonna like this one too. And thanks for having me. Ah, oh, lovely stuff. We need to get that as a soundbite for when we're advertising the pod. No, great stuff, Christine. Right, so thanks for listening, everyone, to the LET Golf podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Remember to give us a follow on socials at LET Golf, and we'll see you next week. It's a competition clinching shot. How about that? The LET Golf podcast, the official podcast of the Ladies European Tour.